Hey guys, it's Janice. Welcome back to my channel. If you're watching this video, then you've probably seen my previous video on getting started with digital note taking. If not, I'll link it here somewhere on the screen. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you how to effectively use Microsoft OneNote to make digital notes. This is probably one of my top digital note taking applications this year. I just find myself coming back to it because of the syncing capabilities and its organization system. I like the idea of having a notebook and having several more sections within it and more sections and pages under those sections. And they're all easily accessible from the navigation panel, which you can also hide if you want it out of your way. So all in all, OneNote does have a really good organization system that a lot of students can take advantage of. By the way, not all of my notes are listed here because the list would be way too long, so I moved them out temporarily. Anyways, here is how I've organized my OneNote notebook. So I have one notebook for my entire degree. I suggest making one notebook for all of your courses so you don't have to sync as many. And also because their page organization system is really great for keeping each of your courses separate. So as you can see, I made a notebook for my entire nursing degree. And within this notebook, I create what they call section groups based on what semester I'm in. And under these semesters, I create actual sections for each individual course. You can also customize the colors for each one of them to your liking. Of course, this is just one way to organize your notebook. Other ways you can do it is to make a notebook for your current semester, make section groups for each course, and sections for lectures, study notes, and assignments. Alternatively, you could also make a notebook for just your school year, make section groups for each semester of the school year, and list your courses under each semester. Now for each course in my notebook, I make new pages based on the topic that is being covered that week. Alternatively, you can name it week one, week two, week three, all the way to whichever week your course or semester ends. I just prefer having the topic name there because then I know which one to click if I forget which week I learned what, which does happen quite a lot, especially if you're juggling a lot of courses at once. Now there are a couple ways that I use OneNote for making digital notes. Firstly, I use it for lecture notes where PowerPoints aren't available for annotation. If there are PowerPoints, I like to use a handwriting app like GoodNotes. Now for this, I typically start a blank page under the course and name it lecture notes. And you can actually make sub pages under this page for each new lecture. And in these pages, you just jot down chicken scratch bullet points with no real format other than maybe some headings to indicate which topic you're taking notes on and the date of these lecture notes. Formatting should not be important here because you are just trying to focus on getting as much information as you can from your lectures. The formatting and polishing can be done after when you are reviewing and studying. To make a subpage, you would just insert a new page as regular and then drag it under like this. The main lecture page can also be useful for jotting down housekeeping stuff like in-class reminders, midterm exam dates, quiz dates, assignment due dates, and any tips that your instructor might give about them. If you like, you can also create a to-do list based on these dates. OneNote has a variety of useful tags that you can use, and I'm gonna show you how I integrate them into my study notes in just a bit. Secondly, I reformat and retype these lecture notes onto another page under the course, and I call these study notes. So first, I do lecture notes, and second, I do study notes. I review from these study notes because they are organized and nicely polished with a color coding system in place. What's great on OneNote is that you can actually open a new window and put both windows side by side so you can refer to your lecture notes while retyping your study notes. Now, one thing that I wanna bring your attention to when making your study notes is that you can actually make use of the to-do tag in OneNote to create a to-do list of all the main big topics that you'll have to cover in your study notes, which you can then check off as you finish writing notes on each topic. You can scroll down your lecture notes quickly to get an idea of what the main topics will be, and these are the ones that will be in your to-do list. This will keep you organized with class content and also keep you actively aware of your note-taking progress. So yes, this is an example of the study notes that these lecture notes have turned into. With the main heading, you can easily play around with fonts to make it stand out. The one that I'm using here is called Agatha. I'll put a link in the description box below. I do encourage you to play around with fonts because that's how you can have a little more fun with digital studying. So just putting my lecture notes and new study notes side by side, I can start making headings based on the main topics of the lecture that I put in the to-do list and highlight them in a color dedicated to headings. As with handwritten notes, it's just as important for you to have an effective color coding system when making digital notes. 
When rewriting my study notes, I turn my notes into sentences that are actually comprehensible, with most abbreviations being re-expanded into their actual words. At this point, you can also supplement your notes with information from any textbooks you use, but for me, a textbook wasn't necessary in this class, so I did not have to do that. Now, OneNote has these little tags that are super helpful that you can add to your notes. If there is anything that I just don't understand or need more clarification with, like if I'm asking why, I want to make that apparent, so I use the question mark tag beside that note. Maybe this is something I will consult my textbook about or ask my friends or instructor about. The point here is to not type down everything like you know it, but also determine what information you aren't really understanding. If in class my instructor said something about this being on the test for sure, I might put the critical tag next to it, which is an exclamation mark. The great thing is that you can actually put multiple tags next to the note, so if it's something that will be on the test for sure, but you're also not super sure that you understand it, you can put both the exclamation mark and question mark next to the same note. With that said, you can also quickly make a separate to-do list anywhere on the page next to your notes to indicate that you need to clarify several points. You can easily drag in pictures or diagrams and put them wherever you find appropriate and wherever you think will help you with understanding your notes. If I know I'm coming to the end of rewriting my lecture notes, I usually like to start new sections horizontally rather than vertically because I don't want the page to end up being way too long. The thing that I love about OneNote is that you can play around a lot with where you want your notes because you can start anywhere on the page. There is also a great search function that lets you search words across all notebooks, certain sections, or certain pages. So if in any case you want to search up a term quickly to remind yourself of what it is, you can type that in and OneNote will find that for you. Of course, if you're using an iPad or tablet as well, you can install OneNote and access this exact same notebook from there. Just make sure when you open the app to sign in with the same Microsoft account that was used when creating this notebook and choose to sync all your notes. This will require Wi-Fi. Any changes that you make to the notebook on your tablet can also be synced so that if you open it again on your computer, it will have the most recent changes that you made. Now, if I'm viewing my notebook on an iPad, I'm usually just reviewing it and not so much adding new content. If anything, I like to jot down notes with my Apple Pencil using their draw function to reinforce certain points because as you know, writing things down can help you remember a little bit better. So if I'm going down the page and I see a point that I really wanna reinforce in my head, I'll just rewrite it with my Apple Pencil right next to the point. I might also wanna take advantage of the highlighting tool and just highlight extra points that I think are important. As I said, you can also use your tablet to annotate any diagrams or pictures that you put into your notebook. I find this a lot easier than labeling it on the computer. So that is pretty much how I've been using OneNote. I'm obviously not an expert at it, but I am trying to get better at using it. So if you're a beginner with digital notes, I hope this video gave you some useful tips and tricks with getting started on OneNote. I'd love to hear how you guys are using it, so please leave your experiences in the comments below. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. Please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching. See you guys in my next video.